Mark chapter 16, when you, when you got it, say, I got it. No, you got to say it with a Hispanic flavor, African-American flavor. You got to say, I got it. Like, leave me alone. Lo tengo. Mark chapter 16, we stand in reverence to the word of God. Mark chapter 16, if you're sitting, I'm going to ask you to stand in reverence to the word of God. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 7, New King James Version says, And now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices, that's where that name comes from, that they may come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They said among themselves, they're talking on the way there, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? They're trying to figure out how they're going to get into the tomb. But God had other plans. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. For it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. Don't be scared. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. I want to make emphasis on that. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. Wait a sec. It don't stop there. Oh, it gets better. Tell your neighbor, it gets better. Tell them. So he says, he is risen. He is risen. He's not here. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. In other words, see it for yourself. Verse 7, but go tell his disciples and Peter, so important, that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. I want to underscore that, that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is power. We don't just believe a word. We believe the word. Your word is life to us. Help us to, de uh, help us to apply the word today, to hear the word and to apply the word. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're in this place. Rest on me as you rested on Jesus for this assignment, for this moment, we give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Before you sit down, can you help me preach today? You're going to talk a lot to your neighbor. I, I, I need you to help me preach the sermon title today and turn to two or three people and ask them this question. Who are you looking for? No, no, no. Come on. Turn to someone else. Tell them, tell them be honest. Who did you really come looking for today? Ooh, it's getting tense. It's getting tense. Come on, if you came looking for Jesus, would you give him a shout of praise in the room? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I came looking for Jesus. No, no, turn some, to someone else. I came looking for Jesus. Woo, I feel it now. Come on, y'all. Glory. I'm trying to behave myself. One more time. Can you just give God a hand clap of praise if you believe that today? For those that don't know me, I was born Gabriel Angel Gauthier on I was born I told you I would show you the picture, right? 
This is how I would go to school. I was born Gabriel Angel Gauthier on April 18th, 1986, to parents Angel Luis and Medium Gauthier. The name Gabriel means messenger. I was actually named after my father, Angel Gautier, or Angel Gautier, who was named after his father, Luis Gautier. I was named messenger, and interesting enough, it pleased God that I would eventually become a messenger of the gospel today. Now, my wife's name is Amanda. Amanda... Don't you dare take pictures. (laughs) Now, my wife's name is Amanda, which means beloved. If anyone knows her, beloved perfectly describes who she is. She is easy to love. We have two daughters, Isabella Grace and Zoe Faith. sibling rivalry. (laughs) Isabella means devoted to God. Zoe means a God type of life. Our first child who we didn't have, who we didn't have the chance to meet face to face, is named Angela. It's a play on the name Angel because now she is in the presence of the Lord with her grandmother. I went through I went through this short bio to show you that names are meaningful. Names have power. And they also have an origin. When you name something, you try to think of its purpose and its assignment. You can't be casual about naming something or someone. Because names give identity. As children, one of the first things that we're taught is our name. Later in life, when you sign contracts or you have a credit card bill or you're about to finish paying for a meal, you don't sign, I promise to pay you or I got you. But you sign your name as to seal the fact that it's going to get done. In other words, my character and my commitment are tied to my name. You're going to get me in a minute. Resurrection is about much more than a man being born, being crucified, and rising on the third day with all power in his hands. It's about a man named Jesus. Isaiah foretells and God makes sure that Mary names him Jesus on purpose. Jesus' name, uh, Jesus' name really means wonderful counselor. It means mighty God. It means everlasting father. It means prince of peace. Those are the characteristics and the definitions that are in his name. But why does God have to name him and why can't Mary just give him a regular name because that name would later heal that name would later restore that name would later open blind eyes that name would later cast out devils that name would bring a 12 year old girl out of death and into life and it, that name would tell Lazarus to come out of the grave Loose him and let him go. Tell your neighbor there's power in the name. No, 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 no. Tell your neighbor it's not just another name. It's the name of Jesus. It's not just another name. It's the name of Jesus. I'm trying to behave. I, I promise you. But something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. I, 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 I'll change next Sunday but you got to know if you're in this room if you've ever been caught up in an issue and you can't call your mom you can't call your father you can't call your friends you can't call your bestie but if I call on the name of Jesus is there
there anybody here that's ever been in trouble and you said Jesus if you've ever been in trouble and that name has saved your life, would you give God a shout of praise in the room? What I'm trying to say is that resurrection brings out the meaning and the significance of the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 2. 4 verse 12 says nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved what's the name somebody say Jesus and listen because of resurrection there now is salvation in the name of Jesus because of resurrection there is restoration in the name of Jesus because of resurrection, there is peace in the name of Jesus. Because of resurrection, there is joy. Glory. There is joy in the name of Jesus. There's, because of resurrection, there is provision in the name of Jesus. Because of resurrection, demons tremble and fear at the fact that his name has resurrection power. Because of resurrection... There is miracle and wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. Tell two or three people around you, tell them there's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, turn to two or three people. Come on, I'll get to resurrection, but you need to know the power that there is in a name. Woo, there's power in a name. Something happens when you call that name. I'm telling you, if you've ever been trapped and you called on that name, that name will pull you out of some stuff. If you've ever been sick, you call on that name, that name will begin to heal things that were uncurable. If you've ever been locked up in a room, depressed, discouraged, there is a light that comes with the name of Jesus. There is a healing, a restoration, a restitution. If you've ever been backstabbed, betrayed, there is a restoration that happens in the name of Jesus. And so the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are important to us because they show us that everyone uh, that comes into contact with Jesus leaves restored. If you read your Bible carefully, Jesus restored much more than people's health. He restored their identity. So for example, is there anybody here that can tell me the name of the woman with the issue of blood? I'll wait. We only know her because of her condition. Her identity was wrapped up in her condition. We don't know the name of the ten lepers that came to Jesus outside of the city gates. Their identity had been stripped down to the condition on their skin. We don't know the name of the paralytic that was brought to the presence of Jesus. His identity was wrapped up in his paralysis. We don't we don't call Bartimaeus Bartimaeus. We call him blind Bartimaeus. As to say, blindness is his first name and Bartimaeus is his last name. Why? Because there are people that will only know you and identify you based on where they found you. But tell your neighbor, God gave me my name back. I know there are people who dragged your name, but God has a way of restoring the validity, the character, and the strength of your name. This is why Jesus tells the woman with the issue of blood after she was healed, daughter, your faith has made you whole. This is why he tells blind Bartimaeus, son, your, son, your sins have been forgiven. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he calls me by my name not by my condition tell your other neighbor he calls me by my name not my condition be careful what you call people based on where you find them be, be careful what you name something based on what it looks like right now because God has a way of restoring names has anybody here ever experienced that God has restored much more than your health? Restored much more than your finances? Restored much more than your family? He restored my identity. 
I am who Christ says that I am. He has restored my, my self-image. And so the angel tells them, remember what God said. They, they're coming. They're coming, to the, they're coming to the tomb. And they come up. And the first thing that the angel says to them is remember what God said. He's not here just as he said. I know you're frustrated, but remember what God said. I know you're upset. I know you're angry. I know you don't know what to do right now, but remember what God said. Tell your neighbor, remember what God said. Woo, remember what God said. I feel like I'm about to set some people free with this statement. Your job and your primary assignment is not to change people. Look at you, you upset. I'm trying to set you free. You cannot change people. You ever spent hours and hours on a phone counseling someone, and after you gave them all the advice, what did they do? The opposite of what you told them. Because you can't, glory, come on, y'all. Come on, that person is probably sitting right next to you right now. It's all right, just look straight, just look straight. Tell your neighbor, I ain't trying to change you. I ain't trying to change you. That's not my job. As a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, my assignment is not to change you. I cannot do that. It's only the word of God that changes the heart of man. That's why you need a preacher in your life. That is why you need a pastor in your life. That is why you need a leader in your life. Because the word of God has transformational power. My job, I need you to write this down if you're taking notes. My job and my primary assignment is to remember what God said. Is to remember what he said. What did God say? What did God say to you? When my body is feeling sick and the doctor says that there's no cure, I have to remember what he said. When there are issues in my family, in my marriage, and everyone's telling me to give up hope, I have to remember what God said. Tell your neighbor, remember what God said. Glory. No, no, no. Tell the other neighbor, remember what God said. Woo! I'm telling you, the serpent is cunning. The serpent will come and try to convince you out of what God said. No, God didn't say you would be healed. The devil is a liar, and so is his mother-in-law. I walk in health. I walk in prosperity. I walk in restoration. I walk in healing. I walk in the word. I walk in his promises. If God said I can have it, I can have it. If God said I can do it, I can do it. If God said it's healed, it's healed. If God said it's restored, it's restored. Is there anybody here that knows what God said? What did God say about your family? I know what the counselor is saying. I know what the doctor is saying. But what is God saying about it? What did God say? We're so quick to say what other people said that we forget what God said. We're so quick to remember what Facebook said that we forget what his book said. Remember what he said. When discouragement, depression begins to knock on the door, you feel like the walls are caving in. You got to remember what God said. Tell your neighbor, remember, 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 remember. You remember that? You remember how God pulled you out of that hole? You remember how God restored that situation? You remember how you were lost? You didn't want to talk to nobody? And God restored your mind? God restored your heart? God restored you for God? You must have forgot. You must have forgot how God called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. You must have forgot how the doctor said that that disease was incurable. And in one moment, God healed my body. God restored my marriage. Is there anybody here that remembers? I remember what he did. I remember what he pulled me out of. I remember how he caused me to stand on a firm foundation. I was losing my mind. And I remember 
if you remember would you give God a remembrance praise would you give God an no 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 that's a I forgot that's I think but is there a people in the house today that can stand up on their feet give God a I remember I didn't like myself they left me they abandoned me but I remember the day he found me I remember how I felt I remember how my heart burned Tell two or three people, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget, don't forget. No, 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 go to somebody. Get out of your seat. Go to somebody. Tell them, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't catch amnesia. Don't catch amnesia every time you're in the presence of the Lord. You got to remember. This praise does not come with a, I got it all together. This praise is not a, I got it all together praise. This praise is not a, I figured it out praise. This is, I know that if he did it before, I said, if God did it before, he's able to, if you know he's able, would you give him a shout of praise in the house? You may be seated. Person behind you can't see. I remember. I remember. I'm not crazy. I remember. That's why you got to be careful not to judge the praise of the person next to you because just because you forgot doesn't mean that they forgot. That's a word. Just because you caught the, the forget sees doesn't mean that that other person forgot where they were yesterday. And they forgot how God provided the milk. God provided the bread. God provided. Tell your neighbor, remember, 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 remember. Remember, remember, remember. Remember, remember, remember. Woo. Can I keep going? They get there, Bridget. They say, okay, you gonna, girl, you gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure his body's ready. You're gonna make sure that everything's clean. Okay, Mary, Mary, you, you got this? Okay, I'll, I'll deal with that. When they get there, the angel said, he's not here. What you mean he ain't here? What you talking about Jesus ain't here? Remember, and this is so important to know, remember Jesus is not just the crucified Savior. That's a partial revelation of who he is. Jesus is not just the crucified Savior. He is also the risen King. He is not just a lamb that was slain. He is the lion of the tribe. Come on, y'all. If you have a partial revelation of who he is, you're going to be sad all the time about Jesus. And then you're not going to understand why every time we're in the presence of the Lord, we don't act like this is a funeral. There's some people, I know you won't admit it, but you came here expecting a funeral. You ain't going to get that today because you have a partial revelation of who he is. Woo. This, listen, somebody, somebody say third day. Third day. Now, if we were just talking about Friday, that would be all right. But Friday uh, 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 precedes a Sunday. And that is why, because we have a full revelation when we come into the presence of the Lord, we lift up our hands, not because we have a partial image of what God is able to do. It's because we have a full grasp that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask, think, or even imagine. That's why I have a full revelation. I know, I know, I know right now the counselor is saying my family this and that and, and my marriage is, is going to buckle under the pressure. But I, I know I have a full revelation that as for me and my house, we're, I know I... I, I know my kids are not home today, 
but I have a full revelation that just like the prodigal son's father stood at the door he stood at the door because he had a full revelation that if my son left it's just a matter of time before my son comes back now now oh y'all 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 oh you getting it you getting it there's some people who get upset when they don't get the job but people who have a partial revelation of the doors that god opens get upset when god doesn't open the door if you have a full revelation of what god and who god is you understand according to the book of revelation he's not just the god who opens doors man cannot close but he's also the door the god who closes doors that man cannot open I have tell your neighbor I have a full revelation of who he is no don't tell the other neighbor I have a full revelation of who he is what's the full revelation he's not just alpha he's old he's not just the beginning he is the end he's not just the beginning and the end he's everything when i'm in the middle i don't have to worry because i have a revelation of who he is how many here have ever been in a middle place no, 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 no. I'm going to ask the question again. You're probably there right now. You just haven't identified it. How many here have ever been in the middle? You're not there, but you're not where you used to be. You're not where you want to be, but where you're not in your past. You're not in the addiction, but you're not in the complete deliverance. And those that are in the middle give God a middle praise because they understand that God is not just the writer of my story. He's not just the finisher of my story, but he's also the God who's still writing my story. He is. Come on, y'all. If you know he's the God of the beginning, the middle, and the end, would you give him a praise? I'm not going to be stressed about this. I'm not going to be anxious about this. I'm not going to lose sleep. I feel it today. Tell your neighbor, stop stressing. Stop stressing. Stop stressing. No, 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 no. Tell somebody else, stop stressing about this. What you're going through right now did not catch God by surprise. Some of the people here, you know why you're anxious? Because you think it's taking God by surprise. What you're going through right now does not, nothing we go through takes God by surprise. God is fully aware. God knows where we are. God knows where we will be. And God knows where we have been. He's not just the, not just the innocent man on the cross. He's the priest, the prophet, and the king. Glory. Me, if I'm in public and somebody says, Gabi, I'm expecting one of a couple people when I look back. I'm expecting you. I'm expecting my brother. I'm expecting my mom or my dad. Amongst a couple other people in my immediate family nucleus. So I look back because only they know me that way. So only they can call me by that name. You're going to get me in a minute. If I'm walking in, in public or I'm walking at tops and I hear, Pastor G! Or I hear, Pastor Gabriel! Or I hear, Pastor! Or Password! <laughs> One of the little kids in children's church thought my name was Password. You're going to get me in a minute. I turn around and I'm expecting to see you because you know me that way. If I hear babe, I only turn around for one woman. Oh, you're going to get it in a minute because only rababashaha. 
only she knows me that way and so I respond to the way they know me and so I was at home a few years ago uh, uh, my daughters when they were younger they walked up to me one day and they said dad I have a secret I said what, what, what is it I know your real name Now, if you're a part of an Hispanic household, or if you're a part of a very passionate culture where your parents never disclose their legal name to you, anybody here ever called their mom or their father by their first name? That's why you're still alive. Glory. That's why you're breathing. She said, your name is Ke I said, why? Because you don't know me that way. You get to call me dad. See, see, this is why you need a full revelation of who he is. Because if you only have a partial revelation of who he is, you'll only see God one way. This is why we call him Jehovah Jireh. Because when we were we didn't know how we were going to make it. We didn't know how we were going to provide. God made a way and he provided. And he became my Jehovah Jireh. Now, if you've ever been in a season where you were about to lose your mind, don't worry, I know that's nobody here, or you were about to lose it because certain things were going upside down, right side up, all in between, you know, six-speed automatic or six-speed manual, and you were going 100 miles in your mind and didn't know how to slow things down, you learn who Jehovah Shalom was. Jehovah Shalom is the God of my peace. And so now, if you've never been there before, you don't know him like that. Tell, tell your neighbor, you don't know him like that. 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 So, so, so my question is, did did, did you walk into it or did God allow it to reveal his name to you? Did God allow for you to walk into that storm just so he could reveal Jehovah Shalom in the storm? Did you walk into debt or did you walk into a chaotic financial situation or was God looking for an opportunity to reveal Jehovah uh, uh, Jireh to you? Now, if you've if you've never been sick, you've never understood the full length or the fullness of Jehovah Rapha, who is the God who heals me. But I have to allow, I have to walk through sometimes doors that I want to avoid so that the full picture of God is revealed in my life. Tell, ask your neighbor, how do you know him? 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 There was, there was, there was somebody who was like, hey, uh, uh, Gabby. I go, mm-mm. Mm-mm. You don't call me like that because you become familiar with people who you call based on a name you don't know them. And so it is the experience of walking with somebody that you begin to, their name is revealed. Somebody say, there's power in the name. Somebody say, there's power in the name. This is why we call him that. And so, and so he met us and healed us. He met us and stabilized us. He met us and restored us. He met, he met me when I didn't have anything and he provided for me. That is why I can say he is my Jehovah Jireh. It don't matter what job I accept. It don't matter what business I start. I know eventually he is the only one that can provide my needs. He is the one that signs the check. I know there might be another person's name on that check, but he is the source of that check. He is the source of everything that I have. My question for you today is, who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? There's an empty tomb, and this is what I love. This is what I love because words mean something in the Bible. I was reading this week on the scriptures, and I was reading on all the gospel accounts of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In every account of the resurrection, Everybody's looking for Jesus 
like he's lost or someone stole him. Read your Bible. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever done this before? You ever done this before? You ever done? Amanda, where are my sunglasses? Has anybody seen my sunglasses? I know this ain't you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Babe, you took... I remember yesterday, you said something about my sunglasses, and you were wearing my sunglasses. Where did you put them? Oh, Omar. He was looking at me, and he was, saw me with my sunglasses. He stole my, I knew he was jealous. I knew he was jealous about my sunglasses. I was killing with them sunglasses, and he stole my sunglasses. Zoe Bello, have you seen, has, you ever, you ever been, has anybody, everybody stop, has anybody seen my sunglasses? You making a show. We ain't going anywhere until I find my sunglasses. Ain't nobody gonna eat nothing in this house until I find my sunglasses. We start blaming people. We start blaming people. And so, and so here it is. The sunglasses were never lost. It's just my eyes were not revealed to them. Jesus was never lost. Jesus cannot be found because he is only revealed. Hear me. Nobody stole Jesus. Nobody took Jesus because no one can take his life. He gave it. You're going you're to get me in a minute. Jesus was trying to reveal himself to his disciples. If you read all the accounts, matter of fact, um, the angel in the tomb, could it be possible that it was Jesus? In, in another account, the book of John, I believe, Mary turns around and sees a gardener. She says, she looks at the gardener and says, tell me, did you take him? The gardener then reveals himself as Jesus because only God can reveal God. Listen to me, church. Jesus has never been lost. We have. Jesus is not missing. We're the ones that take a rabbit hole trail in life and we forget that he is the only reason of our existence. He is the only reason why we're alive. Jesus reveals himself because he knows where you are right now. I'm not talking about your physical location. I'm talking about where your heart is. I'm talking about where your mind is. God knows in such a way, God knows where we are because he found Moses when he tried to run. He found him in Midian. And he began to burn, a, and he consumed a burning bush just to let Moses know, I know where you're at. David walks in, not even called to be the next elected king of Israel, but God knows where David is. I love it because God knows where Peter and Andrew, his brother, are when they were fishing. And he says, follow me and I will make you fisher, fishers of men. Tell your neighbor, God knows where you are. No, no, no. Come on, tell somebody else. God knows where you are. Woo! Jesus comes to Nathaniel. I love this one the best. Comes to Nathaniel and says, and Nathaniel says, how do you know me? And Jesus tells Nathaniel, I saw you when you were under that fig tree before Philip found you. I saw you. God sees where you are today. Would you stand on your feet today? Has anyone seen Jesus? I know there are people here today, maybe you came looking for 
an encouraging word. Maybe you came looking for hope. Maybe you just came looking for relief. Just, I need a break. The truth is, you don't find God because God is never lost. God finds you. There are people in this room that have a real testimony. My wife and I have heard <coughs> some interesting testimonies of where God found some people in this room. And, and, and let me just say, some people were not found in church on a Sunday morning, right before or after the sermon. There are some people who were found in the dope house. There are some people who were found in depression. There's some people who were found when your whole family abandoned you. There's some people who were found when you didn't know what that GPS was doing called life and you didn't know what was next. You didn't know how you were going to make it. You didn't know how you were going to make it to tomorrow. But there is a truth in knowing that while I'm looking for Jesus, the reality is that God has really found me. God is really looking to see and reveal himself to me. There are people, you know, like, Lord, reveal yourself, reveal yourself, reveal yourself, reveal yourself, reveal yourself. And, and we ask these questions, like, Lord, what is your plan? What is your plan for my life? The thing is, you can't get God's plan without God. You can't get what he has without him. And the God we serve is so, he's multifaceted. His love is multifaceted. His love, I know there are a lot of people in this room that only have a one-dimensional view of God's love and they have this, this view that God is mad, upset with you, wrathful, revengeful against you. That couldn't be further from the truth. God's love is not just a jealous love that goes after you, but it's also the Father's hug and embrace. It is not just this, this furious a passionate zeal for you that goes after you when you were lost but it's the also the love that says it's time to get it right and it's time to get your life together it's that type of love come on parents in the room it's that type of love that doesn't just say give me a hug after they they uh, 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 fall off the bed and scrape their knee but it's the love that says don't do it again don't do it again if you do it again you're gonna fall and today I'm trying to show you there is one God, but you can see him differently. There is only one way to God. One way. His name is Jesus. That is the name we call on today. That is the name we lift up today. That is the name we honor. We don't honor Muhammad, Buddha, Gandhi. We thank people for their contribution to society. But listen, there is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved. Except for the name of who? No, no, except for the name of who? Come on, church. Except for the name of who? If you know that name today, would you give him? A roaring shout of praise. I like my name. I like my name. I like it. But my name does not save. I like my name. I love... I love when my, my wife calls my name. I love when my daughter say, Dad... I love that. But there's no restoration, restoration in my name. My name doesn't restore. My name doesn't heal. My, na my name doesn't make people's lives new. No, it does not. There is only one name. Under heaven. By which men can be saved. And today, if you want to receive that name, you say, Pastor, I just... I just, I just need peace. You can't have peace without the name. There are people, I'm telling you, there are people that have come for prayer. Pastor, I just want joy again. I said, do you want Jesus? No, I just want joy. You can't have joy without Jesus. Pastor, I want peace today. 
okay, do you want Jesus? No, 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 I, I don't want to make, here it is. I don't want to make that commitment. You can't have peace without the name. So what are you looking for today? You thought you were looking for peace? No, baby, you're really looking for Jesus. You thought you were looking for joy? No, you're really looking for Jesus. Because if I have Jesus, I have. If you want Jesus, if you want Jesus today, if you want to recommit your life to that name, if you want to give your heart to that name, I need you to lift up your hand today. If you want to be saved by that name today, come on, there it is. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. You're the reason why we're here. You're the reason why all of this is happening. It's because I know, I know some of y'all feel lost today. You're about to find yourself real quick. Repeat after me, Lord. I give you my heart. I declare that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive forgiveness for all of my sins and I declare I believe that you pay for all of them I receive salvation and a new life in that name I believe and put my faith in that name today my life is made new because of that name and I believe in the name of Jesus here it is we believe it when we pray we don't pray in the name of pastor we don't pray glory to God we don't pray in the name of Omar we don't pray in the name of pastor of men. We pray in the name of Come on. Sign, sealed, and delivered. Salvation is mine. I be if you believe you're saved and on your way to heaven, would you give God a, come on. Give him praise for that name. Give him praise for that name. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Come on church, one more time. Lift up a roaring praise to the name that defeated death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Would you tell two or three people around and tell them there's power in the name. There's power in the name. Ooh, there's power in the name. Come on, hug somebody and tell them we family. There's power in that name. There's power in that name. There's power in that name. Come on, tell somebody there's power in that name. There's power in that name. After we're done today, after we're done today, there's going to be intercessors up at this altar. When we close, before you get pictures and you do all of this stuff, which, yes, enjoy your day. Go ahead and drink some lemonade. <laughs> Amen? We're going to be drinking plenty of lemonade, right? Bless God. Amen? Arnold Palmer's. Amen? Passion fruit. Glory. No, for real, if you need prayer today, if you feel like you're in a place where you don't see a way out, our intercessors will be up here to pray for you. Pray for you, your family. We believe in the power of prayer. Why do we believe in the power of prayer? Because we don't pray in our name. We pray that it's already done in the name of Jesus. As you go back home today, if you ever feel the enemy's trying to oppress, discourage, derail you you know what you do in the name 
If the enemy's trying to cause confusion in your house, you, you, you better go up in that house, get some Goya oil. Goya is always... Si es Goya, tiene que ser bueno. Si es más sola, no puede estar sola. Come on, y'all know y'all... Good, that, that good oil. You put oil over your house. You put oil over your children. And you say, in the name of... You will live and not die. In the name of, you will serve the Lord for the rest of your days. In the name of, you will be healed and not die. In the name of Jesus, me and my house. In the name of Jesus. Church, for the next few weeks, there's connection nights. There's going to be a connection night in Buffalo. There's going to be a connection night in Niagara Falls. If you have family today, right now, that lives in Grand Island, Niagara Falls, anywhere in the North Towns, Riverside, they wake up, they wake up late. I need you to send them to Niagara Falls, 520 66th Street in Niagara Falls. We want to be a blessing to them. There's connection nights. Get somebody to church today. Encourage them to go to church today. Amen. There's a connection night in Buffalo, April 22nd. Connection night in Niagara Falls. This is the night where you get to know us. You connect. Learn ways to connect and grow with us. There's a men's bowling night. There's a serve day. There's amazing things. Above everything, today, don't just leave. Connect to Prince of Peace. And somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, connect. Amen. Tell the other neighbor, connect. Tell, tell that neighbor, tell him you're home. That's your seat. If you ever see somebody sitting in that seat, you tell them, excuse me. I love you, but that's my seat. Pastor said it. Pastor said it. Were you blessed today? I said, were you blessed today? Can I bless you? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Every hand lifted. Our children are going to be coming up in a moment. There is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved except by that name. Father, I thank you for each and every person that said yes today. They came to this house, to this place, so many amazing churches in the city of Buffalo, and yet they chose to be here with us because they believe there's power in that name. Thank you, Lord, for the great work you started in each and every life in this house. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would seal this message in their hearts, that they would be fully convinced, persuaded, that he who has begun the good work will finish it till the day of Christ Jesus. We believe that there is power, wonder-working power, resurrection power, miraculous power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your son Jesus. We declare it all in that name. The name of Jesus. If you were blessed today, would you give God a hand clap of praise? God bless you. God keep you.